Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, I see. Think for now, you're going to have to bang bola. Right, anyhow. Right. See, it's hard to find people agreeing on two things. The consensus la arrive on him the other. But if there is one consensus, even among aspirants, it is that two o'clock at a class. Hmm. I have seen everybody. Rendu mani, moon mani na gora okay. Two o'clock na. That is where. Yalla me pick kadi kum bola. Send it. Right. Anyhow, today we have no other choice. But with the stipulated time that has been allotted to us, we will try to finish the economic survey. Right. So the economic survey is. I think you should have known about it. It comes just prior to the announcement of the budget this year. Also, it was announced in January 31, right? It was uh, released in two volumes, with volume one and two. And within five hours, that has been given to us. It's hard for me to do justice to both the volumes. I cannot handle both the volumes. And as far as we have discussed, and because of the time constraints and all. What we have planned is, we are going to take only the volume which is going to be of immediate relevance. Immediate relevance means something that is very important from the prelims point of view, and that will be volume two. Volume one is more theoretical, analytical, and has many of the economic perspectives that we will be dealing with. If things go as planned, we have planned to take that class immediately after prelims. So that you can incorporate most of that in your mains writing. This is what we have planned. So today we are going to deal with specifically with volume two and union budget 2020-21, right? And also, as far as possible, I'll not be trying to digress without outside the bounds of these two books. Lamme ullai erko mariye. We'll try to discuss, right? So first part will be union budget. One of the longest speeches ever made in history, right? So we'll try to do that in a brief manner possible. Right. See, union budget. As far as budget is concerned, those who have attended my class, they also know. Budget is not merely the annual financial statement. Budget is a whole process, isn't it? It comprises of the demand of grants. It comprises of the passing of appropriation bill. Everything. The entire process is called budget. But whatever it is, we associate the main part, that is the annual financial statement, as budget, and it has become synonymous with it. Whatever it is, in our discussion, we are also going to do. The analysis of how the government has laid out or distributed its resources. Right, we are not just going to see the numbers. We are just going to see what is the economic vision of this government, what it has done. As far as not in my view, you know what view I have of the government. So not in my view, according to what the government itself says. Right? Abhi paakrupo, Tamil theory aadhang yaar kungla. Is there anybody who cannot understand Tamil at all? A routine that you can, right? At times, just for entertaining my audience. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> and if you see the the budget proposal. The proposal is centered around a very thematic approach. Every allocation is not just numbers. It says that we have allocated to this. We have a vision in furthering or mobilizing resources towards this area. And it says in a thematic approach we have done. And what is that theme? This is that theme. Is it blurry or is it quite visible? Can we do with this? Right. 
the main aspect or the focus of the budget is about ease of living how to ease the living for every citizen in this in, in this country and how are we going to do that through our focus on important areas three important areas which the finance minister has called a bouquet of flowers and what are these flowers different kinds of flowers are there the first flower being aspirational india the second being economic development and third is about having or bringing about a caring society and how are we going to do this some proposals are there every proposal just follows this idea or this theme right holding these flowers holding this bouquet of flowers are two arms or two hands and the two hands are governance and financial sector so what the government has proposed towards ensuring that there is going to be good governance and what are the proposals that it has made to make the financial intermediary robust and strong in india this is what we are going to see today right so one by one let's focus first flower will be malliya poo hmm right aspirational india so under this aspirational india we have seen agriculture irrigation rural development wellness water sanitation education and skills are three important sub sectors under it one by one we'll see what the government is trying to do right under aspirational india agriculture irrigation rural development the government has is been claiming that it has of course taken a lot of steps right a main focus whenever the government is going to say anything about farmers the plight of farmers it is going to say that we have a mission of doubling farmers income right and it also kind of says or gives itself credit right some words some catchy phrases have given you it says that the kusum project kusum means hmm, solar no need for abbreviation and all and nariya schemes irukku adha paaka venda so this is related to solar agricultural pumps that has ensured energy sovereignty for the farmers paramparagat krishi vikas yojana what is this about organic farming isn't it and that has ensured input sovereignty it seems so these are words which you can always incorporate in your answer writing that's why i am giving you fasal bima yojana has ensured resilience while krishi sinchai yojana has given self reliance for the farmers i hope i don't need to expand on all these schemes i guess and also if you do not have any clarity on certain schemes what i'm going to do here is i'm not going to expand every scheme or we're not going to see all the schemes in detail when we are going through there are a lot of materials to understand so if you come across a scheme which you do not have absolute clarity over make note study when you revise if you are coming across that scheme you have to revise it again okay about pm kisan we know it has supplemented the income and gram sadak yojana has ensured that connectivity is possible for all villages and it also ensures the seamless movement of agriculture products to markets right so this is the introduction about it what the government proposes to do as far as agriculture irrigation rural development is concerned one it makes 16 action point or 16 action plan it has devised and what are the 16 just make a note of we are not going to explain everything in detail one it says it is going to ensure that or it is going to encourage the adoption of model laws by the states for example agriculture leasing act contract farming act the central government has come up with model acts and as you know agriculture is a state subject and it is up to the state to implement it so it is going to nudge the states in order to incorporate or also model a law based on this right and it says that it is going to come up with a comprehensive plan for 100 water stress districts right what are those state districts the government has still not enumerated that that's just said wherever there is acute water stress we are going to plan out a comprehensive plan for it right 
expansion of the Kusum project. Nearly 20 lakh farmers will be covered this year again. And also that, it is also going to supplement that with not just provision of solar pumps. It is going to ensure that the people, if the farmers want to solarize their equipments, any other farm equipments, they will also give incentive. The government is going to give. It has allotted certain numbers that is not needed for us. That's why I'm omitted. Right? The numbers are absolutely not needed for us. Now, and is also going to bring a new scheme for solar generation in fallow lands. Fallow lands means lands where agriculture is not possible or temporary not possible. In that areas, how to monetize those areas, how to generate solar energy from that, the government is making out a plan, right? So, and also it speaks about how we are going to ensure the balanced use of fertilizers. See, no grand plan or vision is there. Whatever has been there previously, it's stretching it out in these schemes, if you see, right? And also for agri warehousing, cold storage, all of that, there is going to be further incentive by the government. Government has also allotted certain amount of funds and it says that all these facilities are functioning as a standalone way or they are strictly compartmentalized. There is no coordination among the farmer or agriculture market. Agriculture market is not unitary in India. And that's why not ensure it. We are going to link that. And for using technology, it has said NABAD will now geotag these facilities so that the stakeholders will come to know where storage facilities are. And if it is not financially feasible, the government has also put forth the option of giving viability gap funding to ensure that agri warehouse, cold storage and everything is getting adequate funds. Right. And also within in empowering of farmers, it also says that Storage schemes or storage facilities should also exist at the village level or at the grassroots level and therefore the farmers capacity has to increase, they have to be given credit. Women and self-help groups will be given priority when these loans are sanctioned, right, especially for agriculture storage facilities. Then we have something called as Krishi Rail, Krishi Rail means Farmers really could have come across that. Krishi rail, Krishi udon, just as we have the uh, what the another civil aviation udon mari, Krishi rail, Krishi udon. Both flight connectivities and rail exclusively for agriculture commodities. As freight, the government has announced two schemes. One is agricultural rail, the agricultural flights. And in order to support horticulture, horticulture has exceeded the production of cereals. That is a fact. It is said that we are going to incentivize or we are going to support every district on the basis of one district, one horticulture produce. One district, one horticulture produce will be submitted by districts and the government will be giving them adequate support for it. And also touches upon the expansion of conventional, not non-conventional farming practices such as integrated farming, ZBNF and all. Right. E-negotiable e warehousing receipts. What is this? Have you come across this? E-negotiable warehousing receipts. See, what is this? A farmer, whenever he's produced a lot of things, he is going to submit it in a godown, isn't it? Go down when he is submitting it, he will be given a receipt. Using that receipt as an asset or a collateral, he can take loans. Right? And that is also tradable because we all know about the what um, agricultural contracts, forwards. Against these forwards, this instrument can also be used. Right? Now the government has proposed that it is going to link this ENWR under the ENAM facility. 
and also the government is further expanding on its facility towards agriculture saying that NBFCs especially NBFCs which are giving lending activities to the agriculture sector, microfinance institutions, they will be given support by the NABAD and also cooperative societies also will be given credit. The target as of now is 15 lakh crores. Agriculture target is increased from 13 lakh crore to 15 lakh crores and also for animal husbandry and all it says that we are going to eliminate food and mouth disease by 2000. Uh, 2022 or 25 artificial insemination has also been proposed to be increased from 20 percentage to 70 percentage in the coming years not in one year in coming years right and it says we are going to come out with a blue a framework for the blue economy especially towards fisheries and all right and also to support the fishing process fishery process the marketing and all there are some something called as Sagar Mitras, just as we have agriculture extension activities, we have fisheries extension also, where the government will be giving technical support in the form of certain correspondence. These Sagar Mitras will now be expanded. So as to target 1 lakh crore fish exports by 2025. Right, and also under the DAY scheme, Dina Dayala and Theodia Ojana, SHGs will also be expanded. So, these are the 16 action points that has been given by the government in order to support one particular area, agriculture, which is part of the aspirational. If India has to be aspirational, we have to certainly support agriculture. And for agriculture, what are the points? It has been given by the government. Right, now let us move on to the second part. Or the second petal within that flower and that is wellness water and sanitation right how do we how does the government say we are going to ensure that india is going to be healthy of course it says we are going to expand mission indira dhanush on an all india basis fit india scheme you wouldn't have known for that specific amount has been allotted jal jeevan yojana sbm jan arogya yojana has now been the government is now trying to empanel more hospitals under this scheme, especially in the tier 2 and tier 3 cities. And it says that it is going, going to identify hospital come uh, institutions, that is hospital come colleges. And if there is a college and an institution, a hospital in a separate manner, they too can combine and they can also empanel. And if possible, they will also be given grants in the form of VGF viability grant funding will also be given right it also says we are going to employ machine learning ai and other upcoming technologies so that we are able to have a robust preventive care and also better diagnosis and better target of those who are unhealthy right Apro, it also speaks of or remission tb tb scheme but you will tell you know to eliminate TB, right? There is a scheme called as TB Harega Desh Jitega, right? Now, for Hindi, we are going to defeat TB, and the and our nation is going to win. That is the meaning of this. So, Dan Jan Aushadi Yojana. The old timers would be knowing, if newcomers, if you are coming across the scheme for the very first time, make note of it and read it, right. It is a pharmaceutical scheme by the government, it will be giving affordable medicines, right. That has been said that to be covering in all districts by 2024, right. Then ODF com plus commitment. Now with that, most of the districts have been made ODF, that is what the government is claiming, we do not know. After that, we are now focusing on the ODF plus. You know, right? ODF, ODF plus plus and ODF plus. ODF plus means not finding any person who is urinating or defecating out in the open. 
and 6, 3.6 lakh, one of the highest amounts within this has been allotted towards water, drinking water, Jal Jeevan Mission. Jal Jeevan Mission aims to give piped drinking water to all households. Right, uh, 3.6 lakh for the entire mission. This year, some fraction of it has been allotted. Now, the third area under the aspirational India is focusing on the education and strength. And so, the government is saying, the government has said that in order to meet the demands of the working age population, which is of course the highest in the world right now, and we are on the verge of breaking into the demographic dividend. We have a lot of potential to use our youths for. Hmm? You are the youths here. A new education policy is going to be framed as the promise of the government. And time and again it has been saying, it has said that not only this, even after that there has been commitment saying within this year we are going to reformulate the education policy. right? And to bring more finance towards education, that is one of the challenges, especially in the higher education area. The government has first time opened up the ECB route, external commercial borrowings route and the FDA route has been relaxed so that educational institutions can now be funded from capital from abroad. Right? That is one of the proposals. Apprenticeship degree, embedded degrees, not standalone apprenticeship, embedded degrees will now be started in 150 institutions as a pilot basis and now will be expanded, which means in the course itself, you have to provide an apprenticeship course. Right, degree le irkunot, apprenticeship. And also to boost this apprenticeship, what it has said that, it has also said that urban local bodies, most urban local bodies, they can now induct students or scholars and make them interns, especially for engineers. Right, especially for engineers, it is said that we are going to see these are just schemes. Way forward. In order to skill people, we have to give more apprenticeship avenues through inductment of these people in the urban local bodies in the panchayats right and full-fledged online degree courses will also has been planned out but this will be offered for only those who have are breaking into the top 100 NIRF rankings national institutional ranking framework those who are in the top 100 they will now be allowed to give online courses a so full-fledged online courses which is of course having all credit and merit as a normal degree, right? And also it is proposing to have a new kind of a scholarship aptitude test, right? Will not look for the SAT, SAT, likewise an Indian version of SAT has been formulated especially for attracting African Asian students because they are the only one who will be visiting here. <laughs> Also, police university and forensic university has also been uh, given funds to be established. We don't know the locations and all. Right. Medical services are having doctor shortages. And so it is going to say every, this is what we also saw in those, on the Janna Aurogya Yojana view. They're saying that hospitals and colleges will now be attached. We have to sign a MOU framework. And for that, VGF funding will also be given. Diploma and fellow of national board under the NBE diploma, some diploma course for resident doctors will now be offered it seems in order to skill them. Right. And also paramedics, especially nurses, will not let the amount of demand. So what we are trying to do is they are not having sufficient skill set even though they are having the required degree. And therefore, 
bridge courses will now be taken upon by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Skill. They will work together, equip those people, especially the paramedics, so that they are able to avail opportunities from abroad. Gaha, some amount of funds has been given. Right? So, the first flower, aspirational India, one focuses on agriculture, second focuses on wellness, health and sanitation, and third focuses on education and skill. So, accordingly, there has been some amount of funds that has been granted to these areas. The second flower will be the economic development. Now, tell us, what do you want to say? Right. Right. Agustin Ingo read out. Right. Under the economic development, you have seen, isn't it? Or should we recall it? To the path down. Flower or the first part we have seen. The second part we are going to see that is economic development, industry, commerce, and investment, infrastructure, a new economy. New economy. Right. So, for industry, commerce, and investment, what is the government trying to do? While reading this passage, I had an LOL moment. In hmm? a moment, now, spirit of enterprise is high among our youths. Risk taking capabilities and also it spoke about a very funny line. Our youths are not job seekers, they are job makers. Right? Isn't it? Right. So, roadblocks will be taken away if there is not to boost innovation further. The investment clearance cell is going to be a portal that will give all one stop solution for all related investment ideas for startups for, for those who are going to enter into the entrepreneurship business. Right? How will come? For an investment clearance cell is being planned. Right? And also, if you see modern day technology is also challenging our educational set. People who are educated in one form of knowledge, they have to face a completely different reality because the world, the pace in which the world is changing is very rapid and also new technologies are born, disruptive technologies are born. So, how are we going to meet the, the gap between the skill set and the educational levels and for that the government is proposing certain things and it says in order to highlight or in order to make the industry meet these uh, demands and all, we are going to specifically focus on the new technologies. What is that? We will see in the later slides. Ippo, the networked products in the based on networked products. What are these networked products? Network products na na. Something which is part of the global value chain. For example, a mobile phone is a network product, not because it is in the mobile network. If you see the entire value chain, one part will be produced in some place, another part in some place. At last to be functional, it will be working on a completely different scale. Okay. Hmm? Hmm? The Oh, Kumbu. Even the lad, Gila, the city to the Ganga, Ericuela. Right. 
right so we the government is saying we are going to bring out a new scheme that is going to specifically focus that we are able to capitalize or make a mark in the network products especially manufacturing of mobile electronic equipment semiconductor packaging id ellathukum specifica focus panna porom solittu the government has not allotted any funds for it it is just said yaar nal sollam right now national textiles technical textile mission edena technical textiles what are technical textiles hmm in the in the gears la right specifically in the idukku porra in the gears specific gear safety gears indha mari technical textiles in the space suits indha mari idala vandu we are importing on that we have to reduce it so it a mission has been launched for it national technical textiles mission right zero defect zero effect manufacturing yaar sonna slogan ah irukku nenikireenga hmm any guesses no guesses no surprises needed நம்ம மோடி தான் சொன்னார் இதை ரைட் ஜீரோ டிஃபெக்ட் ஜீரோ எஃபெக்ட் அப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் குவாலிட்டி ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் கொண்டு வரணுன்றதுக்காக ஆல் மினிஸ்ட்ரீஸ் ஹவ் பின் கிவன் அ ப்ரப்போசல் சேம் தட் யூ ஷுட் கட் டவுன் ஆன் அன்னெசரி எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர்ஸ் ஆர் அன்னெசரி வேஸ்ட் சொல்லியிருக்காங்க ப்ளஸ் நிர்விக் ஸ்கீம் இன் எக்ஸ்போர்ட் ஓரியன்டட் ஸ்கீம் ஆல்ரெடி தட் ஹஸ் பின் லான்ச்ட் போன வருஷமே லான்ச் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஃபார் தேட் what is the layout for this year apni solirukam right and also a unified procurement system a unified procurement system in the sense now there is something called as a government e marketplace where most of the departments which are undertaking a purchase has to go and there is even a clause in order to benefit the msme saying 25% of the procurement should be coming from msme and all if there is now it is saying that a new procurement system under the gem will be launched and that will give immense opportunities for the msmes in order to find markets right now the second part is the infrastructure right in december 31 itself as a new year bonanza enna pannanga national infrastructure pipeline was launched right how many crores was the target 103 lakh crore hmm ee paatha abdin kekkoradu hmm 103 lakh crore has been the estimated amount under the national infrastructure pipeline it's just a vision saying we are going to give thrust towards this area because infrastructure is very critical for us right all right we'll see that budget la survey la paakra few infrastructure pathi konja detailed ah paapom right and also it is saying for infrastructure pro- projects there is going to be a project preparation facility which will enable young engineers mm-hmm. ஓல்டு இன்ஜினியர்ஸே இங்கே சும்மா தான் உட்காந்துருக்கோம் அப்படின்றீங்களா யங் இன்ஜினியர்ஸ் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் கிராஜுவேட்ஸ் எக்கனாமிஸ் அண்ட் தோஸ் தி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஸ்டேக் ஹோல்டர்ஸ் டு கம் ஹேர் அண்ட் பிளான் அவுட் சர்டன் ப்ராஜெக்ட்ஸ் அதுக்காக ஒரு ஃபெசிலிட்டி மாதிரி ஒரு செல் மாதிரி ஒரு ஹோட்டல் வாட் எவர் இட் மைட் பி த கவர்மெண்ட் வில் பி டூயிங் இட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இட் ஹஸ் ஒன்ஸ் அகேன் ரைட் ரேட்டட் தட் த நேஷனல் லாஜிஸ்டிக்ஸ் பாலிசி தேர் இஸ் நோ லாஜிஸ்டிக்ஸ் பாலிசி ஆஸ் ஆஃப் நவ் த கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு லான்ச் அ பாலிசி வெரி சூன் within this year right then highway development chennai mumbai express way delhi mumbai express way idella und there has been budgetary support towards it mainly towards roadway infrastructure invite pandradukaga for railways if you see especially after the coming of this government in the five years there has not been any peri peri announcement la illa mostly they have been focusing on safety modernization right so that's a welcome step of course and this year also it has said along the railway tracks there is a huge parcel of land and if possible i don't know 
And if possible, we are going to invite private public partnership for station redevelopment and all. In the track over the market, in the areas, solar power generation, we are going to allot space. Right? So that railways can also monetize their assets. Railways is also going under a loss. Operation profit is taking a hit because of the reduced number of passengers as freight and everything. That is why these kind of options are now seen. Ports, I think this is also not just an announcement here. We all know it. The government is planning to corporatize. What is corporatize? Hmm? Yeah, not just privatize, it is making that into a company. You cannot, nobody can buy. For example, today ports are managed by the trust. Port trust which is managed by Nitrugo. It is not a company. This, there is no company that is managing a port. It is just a government, a special purpose vehicle. Now the government is saying, well, let us convert that, the manager or the operator of this port into a corporate company. And let us make it public, just as ONGC in the Malang company, Sirkamari, let us also make it a corporate company. That has been already taken. Another Tamil Nadu, what do you know? Not Chennai port. In Nurla, Kamarajar port, Kamarajar port, and the LND port are married. Kamarajar port, the Enna port, the LND port. Because the first corporatized port, a corporatized pani enna ponto na, nearly 64 percentage is with the government, remaining part is been taken by some other private. Adamari, at least this year again the government is saying we are going to corporatize another major port, not minor ports, major ports only, and we are also going to list them in the stock exchanges. No port is found in the stock exchanges because it is no company at all. We are first going to convert that into a company. And also, we are going to make it public. Public means now the shares will be open to anybody to buy. Right, that is the one of the steps taken for port uh, infrastructure. And as usual, the Arth Ganga mission, in order to energize economic activity along river banks, one of the missions spearheaded by the uh, by our Modi. Right, our completion nearly. NW1 order first phase has been completed for extension Panapuranga. For that, there has been some allotment of funds. Right. Again, it says by 2024, 100 more airports will be brought under Udan. Now, nearly 43 have been operationalized under it. 100 more will be brought under Udan within 2024. It also says there is going to be a doubling of fleet. As of now, there are hardly 640 aircrafts. We have to double it to 1200 by 2024. Mm -hmm. For electricity, smart metering, right. OALP, Open Acreage Licensing Policy, uh, 2017, it bro brought transparency into how licenses are given for natural gas and all. City gas distribution ko on this basis, OLP basis, they will be awarded contracts for this year. So, gas grid expansion. Already, Palais Sarakida, Unukusa, Ununda. Right. Abro, new economy in Papa. Economic development, la. industry, infrastructure, ke na na and third will be new economy. So, new economy, the government says that the new economy is going to be, of course, dominated by new era technologies such as AI, IoT, 3D printing and all, right. Still, there is lack of expertise on it, no knowledge, no concrete syllabus or courses to handle with this specialized knowledge. And that's why the government says we are going to bring all of this together, financial tech companies, everything will be given focus on. So, as a first step, as a baby step towards it, it is said we are going to give, make a policy for the establishment of private data parks. Private data parks means 
for example today we have ana solla the storage parks it parks la irukla especially for software consultancy services will be there indha mari storage kaga data privacy data ulle irukano we also now have data localization norms and all in order so in order to make private people mo come more into this idea we are going to facilitate the establishment of data parks right and this we know fiber to home bharat net la 1 lakh gram panchayats we are going to connect again this year the government has continued this forward because 1 lakh gram panchayats have not yet been connected a digital platform and an institute for excellence for ipr related ipr so only two vidama two things have been planned for this year a separate institute for it because no knowledge or no clarity is there among people as far the ip rights is there or the digital rights anala this we have made knowledge translation clusters across different areas and also for genetic landscape for mapping india's genetic landscape a national level science scheme will be launched it seems and then quantum technologies we all to and to also give seed funding for startups the government is specifically focusing these are all emerging technologies and the government is also recognizing that these are going to be very crucial in the coming days and even though there has not been significant allotment towards it recognition itself is a welcome step right you have seen the second flower we are moving to the third one that is caring society and under this the first part is women and child women child and social welfare says that beti padao beti bachao has been a tremendous change especially if we find the gross enrollment ratio at various levels it is higher among girls gross enrollment ratio na what is gross enrollment ratio hmm? not that see we find gross enrollment ratio across different levels of education for example primary secondary higher in papu gross enrollment means there is a total population base eligible population for example primary to 120 130 crores are all of them eligible to go and en enroll themselves in the primary no so eligible nrad 0 to 5 years in the mar uh, 0 to 14 years ab say 0 nre 5 to 14 years ab in the 5 to 14 years ku la ethana population irukanga that is the total eligible population on top of that how many are studying how many have actually enrolled that is called as the gross enrollment ratio in primary education i think even in a test we discussed it can be as high as even 110 percentage in 2009 it was 109 percentage for the primary level how can it be it means that na the news lababa papa me 60 years nana is going to study in primary education in the marla for population base there are only 100 who are eligible to be enrolled under primary but 105 can study right so in the mari varra da idu so mostly gross enrollment ratio for girls at the lower level is 94 percentage which is of course higher than even males right the last certain changes arthu child development ka ha poshan abhiyan a nutrition scheme that has been launched this year i want you to study more on this and this budget also speaks on something called as a committee which will study into the marriageable age for women for girls the marriageable age enna 18 was decided under the sharda sharda act 1829 la 1929 la undathu ipo evlo 14 na 16 na what was the age 21 la illama appala irundha protest panna ca vida protest pannuvaanga ipo 
right? 1929 ல சம் 16 ஆ 14 ஆ சார் ஆக்ட் ஹிஸ்டரி உங்களுக்கே தெரியல அப்படின்றீங்க சரி ரைட் அது வந்து 1978 ல தான் we revised it and we said 18 is the marriageable age for women girls 18 தான் நம்ம சொன்னோம் now because things have changed things have changed there are more career options more women are now being employed the educational levels of women have also gone up so should be revised it's a question the government has not revised it and so the government has proposed to set up a committee to study the marriageable age for women right and also financial support for urban home uh, urban affairs adukku enna panirukanga na sewerage septic tank cleaning ka there has been certain allotments for it so on the whole if you see for scsts and the disabled there has been increased allotment this year by the government right so you cannot make the charge that the government is spending less on social welfare for culture and tourism right there is going to be a new institute called as heritage and conservation indian institute of heritage and conservation சொல்லி there is going to be a new institution that is going to be put up i know it's hard for me to even take this whole class in an interesting way hmm? iconic sites right rakhi gari i want you to underline all of these words and study for mapping like pinadi ka historical significance you should study right rakhi gari hastinapur shiv sagar in assam dolavira and adichanalur in tamil nadu these are the sites that the government has said we are going to come up with an iconic museum iconic sites museums only these five have been chosen this year right illa avlo theva illa right there is already an indian museum at kolkata ada recreate pani some more we are going to bring especially for the tribal museums at jharkhand idala and also this is very important a maritime museum at lothar one of the oldest shopping shipping dockyards we are planning on you know we have planned for a maritime museum so for tourism no kind of schemes has been announced this year it has just said that if at all states are going to come up with a plan and if it is acceptable by the government the government is going to give grants for it so state led tourism plan this year now A caring society how are we going to be a caring society the third focus will be on environment and climate change right idla enna na panirukom cdri right coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure very very important after isa if there is one body where one institution where the indian government itself is taking charge and is on a leadership position that is this right so isa pathi nearly questions have been exhausted within upsc itself every year they have been asking some or one or two questions related to isa so this year you can possibly expect it from cdr right then it has said that the internally national de- determined uh, contributions will be operational from 2020 21 and for that it has said old thermal plants if it is becoming too old the government will not revive it it will allow it to uh, it will allow for the cessation of it and the lands will be reallocated specifically for other forms of energy type right and so if states are also coming up with plans especially for clean air any plans if it is there the government is ready to give funds or grants for it. right rendu mani valaya kattuda so what we have seen so this is the scene right three flowers aspirational india la 
agriculture irrigation and rural development the previous schemes we have seen and also 16 action points we have seen after that wellness water sanitation educational skills kaaga enna panna porom new economy kaaga caring society not so much in this and to carry this bouquet we need two hands and the two hands are going to be governance and financial sector how what is the government trying to do we'll see right tax administration has to be more efficient it has to be fair and it also underlines that there has been some obsolete provisions in our tax regime government itself says that there are laws which takes or reckons civil nature or civil offenses as criminal offenses there are many provisions that are not gone into the provisions at all because romba legal ah irundha nam adala theva padum for example income tax act la edho onnu irukla the nature of it could be civil the offense could be civil but it is treated as criminal offense so this kind of things are actually acting as obstacle for doing business so we have to remove it and so the government has said that steps have been taken and we are going to remove all the criminal liabilities which are of a civil nature then it speaks of place illaya ungalku going on embarrassing ala iruka feel panna vanda vaanga idu inga bollan la now sir sir illa inga illa inga inga kuda ukkanga free ah comfortable inga na ukkanga ah put chuma edichu ponga onnu illa avanga vada pochu endra mari chair pochu enak right it says the government is also trying to establish something called as the national recruitment agency as an umbrella agency which will conduct tests or recruitment tests for all non gazetted posts it's just an idea it may be implementing it in in a mari form we don't know right and so last year we have also seen the arbitration ka certain laws have been made inge kuda the personnel is not shortage of staff ellame ஜுடிஷியரி இருந்தே எமர்ஜ் ஆகிறனால வி ஹாவ் டு கட் இட் ஆஃப் சொல்லிட்டு ஒரு இண்டிபெண்ட் மெக்கானிசம் ஃபார் அப்பாயிண்டிங் ஆல் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஹாஸ் பின் டேக்கிங் பிளேஸ் த்ரூ அமெண்ட்மெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ப்ரொலாங்கிங் தீஸ் ஸ்பேட் ஆஃப் ரிஃபார்ம்ஸ் இஸ் வேர் த கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் சேங் ஃபார் ட்ரிபியூனல்ஸ் அண்ட் அதர் ஸ்பெஷலைஸ் பாடிஸ் டில் நவ் தேர் இஸ் பின் நாமினேஷன் செலெக்ஷன் அண்ட் ஆல் தேர் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி டைரக்ட் ரெக்ரூட்மெண்ட் ரைட் தட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ ஒன் ஆஃப் த மீன்ஸ் ஆஃப் இன்ஷூரிங் கவர்னன்ஸ் இன் இந்தியா அண்ட் என்ஃபோர்ஸ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கான்ட்ராக்ட்ஸ் So enforcement of contracts is one area where India as an economy is lagging in the ease of doing business. Always year on year we will be improving on other counts. There are nearly 10 parameters on the ease of doing business. Enforcement of contracts in the Odi area we will be always above 100 in our ranking. 100 or 120, 140 could be there. I don't know the ranking. For 143 either we have improved this year or not. I don't know. so the whole judicial system is at fault because of this because if there is going to be a commitment on two sides and if one pers- person is failing how do we enforce it hmm avanga avanga pair enna kollu pair enna vandu enforce pannu and alag vegam namu illa and that's why we la vandu strengthen pandradukaga we are going to take steps against it and also if you see <coughs> the statistical body the nssoc is on render and that adu enna chu 
we have merged into the NSSO, NSO and even after that there has been problem and clashes in the way certain studies are conducted. One agency is conducting a study in a different way, the other is conducting in a different way, there is no clarity, even the government accounts itself is contradicting itself. So, put to, in order to put rest to all these conflicts and contradictions, the government is saying we are going to come up with a clear policy on official statistics, right? And also, we are going to use AI, new age data collection methods and information dissemination tools, right? So, new policy on official statistics is going to come this year. And it also says 2022 when we are going to preside over the G20 summit, this is going to give us a nice opportunity to drive forth our development agenda by integrating ourselves with the global world. Right. So, financial assistance from multilateral agencies to Northeast, Utah, Jammu, Ladakh, and the Mari Union territories, we are going to ensure it is set. So, governance we have seen, now financial sector, the first measure under the financial sector or the financial intermediary it says, it is going to allow the public sector banks to raise capital from the capital market either through IPO, either through sale of shares or through other methods. Till now, the government was coming in and selling its own shares by recapitalization bonds. Recapitalization bonds in on port and the bond watch they will be giving money to the particular public sector banks. Now it is saying we won't help. There has been no recapitalization scheme this year. It rather says you yourselves I am letting you free. If you want to raise money you can tap the capital market just as other companies are doing. If SBA wants to take money it can go offload take certain things you can go or float any other debentures and whatever you want and very importantly the threshold of coverage under the DICGC deposit insurance credit guarantee scheme corporation has been increased from 1 lakh to 5 lakh so that this should not be news to you the PMC episode allowance. And that time the genesis took place and the government said, okay, we are going to promise we will certainly raise. But at least five is far reasonable amount. Now, we all know about surface act, isn't it? Surface Act, which allows the creditor to liquidate the assets of the one who has defaulted. The provisions are dual in the sense, the same provisions do not apply for NBFCs. For NBFCs, a different set of, in order to trigger the clause of Surface, they have to come under a very different set of norms. That norms have been relaxed. For example, it says that in order to trigger the Surface mechanism, or to liquidate the assets under the surface, the loan size should be at least of 1 crore and the entire asset that the NBFC are having should be more than 500 crores. This was the limit. This has been brought down saying if you are a company and if you are having just 100 crores and if one asset of you has defaulted and if that range is around 50 lakh, even then you can trigger the surface mechanism. Right? And the government also, as usual, has planned some disinvestments. IDBA, the remaining stake, I am going to sell. Then about pension mobility. Right. The national pension scheme, I want you to go through. Again, already it has been asked, but things have changed a little bit. So, NPS Abhati, again go through it. What we have done is, the NPS is now managed by the PFRB. 
PFRDA killer, there is an NP NPS trust for government employees and we have now been including others also after 2005-06 we have been including other voluntary private people also. Now it is saying we are going to distinguish between these two. A new trust will be managed, a new trust will be established specifically for voluntary contributions, not from the government. So, government trust and private trust will be separated and two trusts will be formed within PFRDA for non-government and government employees. So these are certain things. MSMEs, for MSMEs what it has done is, no need to go into those act and all. NBFCs can now extend invoice financing to MSME through the TREDS. What is TREDS? Hmm? Tradable receivables, right. So, it is kind of a, a promissory note, Murray. See, I have this amount, I have a true asset with me. On top of this, just as we E N D N W R Patamla non negotiable warehousing receipts. And the Mari MSMEs, if they all, if at all they have gone into an agreement with it, if at all there has been a specific exchange with that, they can use that receivable or a receipt and give it to the NBFC, and NBFC will now be empowered to grant them loan against this TREDS. Till now, it was not possible. So, for MSMEs, it has been a credit channel has been opened up, right. And also, there is a new scheme. Already, we have interest subvention scheme for MSMEs. The, we have not, the government has not spelled out the detail of this. It says, as a subordinate debt, not as a normal debt, as a subordinate scheme for, especially for MSMEs, we are going to come out and this will be guaranteed by the CGTMSC. This is just as the DACGC, this is the Credit Guarantee Corporation for MSME, Abhiyot Body Kuda, right, Exim Bank in the Mari, MSME is going to credit a insure Panna your body. So, they will be guaranteed. And something which we have to notice, a restructuring window. What is debt restructuring? Yeah, right, restructured loans in Sonale, some giving some amount of time or a restructuring the asset. For example, you have to pay me within this month, but you are on the verge of default. So, I am going to say, how will you pay me? I am negotiating a deal. I am going to say, okay, extend it within by two months. I am going restructure. Right, class will be best now, isn't it? Restructuring norms. So, in 2018, the government stuck away with all the restructuring norms. It said no restructuring from henceforth. 2018 February, on the February 18th or circular, that said no restructuring. That is why the CDR scheme, 5 by 25 scheme, S4A scheme, everything has been rendered invalid after that. So, the government, the banks have no option of restructuring. So, what will they do? If anything is defaulting, of course, it will be reflected in their NPA column. So, NPS began to rise and therefore, they uh, raised the matter in the court and the court eventually stuck it down saying, you should not, this February 8th circular is invalid. Last year, July, in order to bring effect to those proposal, there was a prudential framework saying, another framework which the RBI gave as a circular which said, we are not going to revive the restructuring scheme. What we are going to do, the court had said that it is not good or it is invalid if you are going to force any particular institution to say that you have to classify your debt only into this without giving him reasonable amount of time. So, I am going to give you a time, 30 days or 60 days for negotiating for resolution plan. On the resolution plan, in the inter-creditor agreement in the idea long world. right, let that be. So, if this was happening in January, uh, Feb February, la, February 8, February 2018, it was stuck down. The end of February 2018, MSMEs were going into a problem, especially because 
the NBFCs were in a problem. The ILFS crisis on the time will another. So what happened? They were asking, give us some amount of leeway. The government asked the RBA and said, allow restructuring only for MSMEs. And it said, okay, no MSM, no restructuring for any other person, any other kind of loans, only for MSMEs I am going to allow. This is not a scheme that is going to be perennial. This is just a one-time scheme, which is going to be only valid for one year. Which is, it said, January so 2019 and 2020, March varakyum. March 31, 2020 applicable. So, MSME loans which are distributed within this period can be restructured. Not above that. Not prior to that. This has been extended. Said, okay, we also find that this year also there is a problem. So, this restructuring window will be extended to the next year also. Clear? So, MSME ki konjong breathing space. And also says, that Exim banks and SIDBI are going to allot 50-50 crore each in order to just help out certain sectors, MSMEs who are trying to export their commodities. Export related MSMEs, 1000 crore ke we are going to help, 900 crore in the form of debt, 100 crore as a grant the government will give. So these are financial sectors, ke certain important things. Now, financial markets, right? in general, what we are going to do, deepening the bond markets. Bond market is not as deep. The market is still, the space for buying and selling of market, the bonds is still immature in India. So, it has said, we are going to deepen it. So, how are we going to deepen it? Last year, also certain measures were taken. This year, as a step forward, it has said, G6, government securities will now be fully open. Some categories of government securities will now be fully open to NRI and they can buy to whatever extent they can. Certain areas, there are certain threshold limits. Now, now some areas have now been opened up to the NRIs. Right? And prior to this, the corporate bond limits, corporate bond limits, right? FPI in particular, foreign portfolio investments. If I am bringing 100 crores, I cannot buy this 100 crores or invest this 100 crores only in buying the shares of Reliance. That is the norm here. You have to diversify. exposure Not more than 9% you should give towards corporate bonds was the norm. That has been relaxed to 15% which means corporate bond market will now attract more foreign funds. Right? Corporate market, la, corporate debt market, if we analyze in the economic survey, we can find that it was not as brisk this year. Therefore, we are trying to reroute foreign portfolio investments into corporate bonds. Right. New debt ETF. What is ETF? Exchange rate fund. 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 Exchange Public sector companies. Adhikaha or ETF. Now the government is saying, why not allow or open this ETF route into government securities also? Not government corporates. Government securities ki kundu araman, kundu and the NAP is upon. Right? And also, NBFCs kaha liquidity, to meet liquidity, there is no special liquidity window for NBFCs, we know. Now, this year it has said, we are going to give a partial credit guarantee scheme for the NBFCs. Banks, if you could have followed the news, you could have known. 
it said that if banks have certain exposure, that exposure can be increased to NBFCs. Of it. Right? And then after that, neither were the yeah, financial market la infrastructure kaha, IFSC, International Financial Center kaha, there has been some high end data processing, international finance in the Mari areas ki, we are going to give money. Free trade zones for vaults, metal testing lab. What is this free trade zone for vault? Hmm? We know that we are a diamond. Diamond um, the cutting panda kudiya, processing companies. Plus, even though we are not a major producer of most of the metals, we we find that met, there is a value added to metals in India. In order to attract this kind of, in order to be part of this global value chain, the government has said if there is a vault where bullions, where metals have to be kept, precious metals, they will be the free trade zones, Mari. And Amari, specifically to focus towards the international financial market, the government is saying free trade walls will now be opened. That is maximum the gift city will now open the wall. Right. After that, we know IPO for LIC and government disinvestments. Government disinvestment or a target increase when you specifically speaking, something which has reached the news is. LIC or IPO. IPO na na. Hmm? Adi teri yaar na. Hmm? Shares being sold to. Hmm? Ab adi public company liya. Hmm? Public limited company vara, government company vara, right? Both are completely different ideas. It 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 would have been the government's company. The government is now saying. In rather than just give it to someone else, I am going to throw it out to the open. Public land, yar naal vaayin kirpa. So, IPO is going to be planned for LIC. General public can buy. So, this are the, with this we are ending the two hands and the three flower story. Budin chupa. So, fiscal developments, if you see, just see the other things, right? What happened this year? No guesses needed. What would have happened? Fiscal deficits in higher gone. Hmm? Fiscal deficit should have obviously gone over. <laughs> we had said that we are going to maintain 3.3 in this year. One version for no. Hmm? GST collections therefore fiscal deficit cannot be maintained within 3.3 and so we overshot it by a huge margin of 0 0.5 3.8 was that amount isn't it fiscal deficit so next year it has been 3.8 so next year if you see we need not go into all of these details there's been one very interesting trend where the government has increased the capital accounts expenditure by a huge amount. All this expenditure, increase capital expenditure in the last five years, this has been the highest such expenditure allotted for capital purposes. Right? So revenue is a welcome move. That's what people were saying. Brakes have been applied to our slide path. It is no longer sliding downward. This year it has gone up. And again, we have to restart our slide path. Right? So, slide path has been reoriented. And due to this, this is a huge margin from 3.3 to 3.8. The government has triggered the escape clause of FRBM. Under the FRBM, we say that specifically there should be 3 percentage, 0.3 percentage reduction. Reduction la, increase. Increase, there is of course 
In 2018 itself, we amended FRBM saying, if at all in one particular year, the economy is in a bad phase, what we can do is, the government is free to increase it by certain margin. But if this is not possible, when three consecutive years, there has been persistent growth. Growth the government has no one, you cannot make the government liable for saying you have not stuck to your fiscal deficit. And also, if you see the source of borrowing this year or the source of borrowing apart from market borrowings, market borrowings is the entire borrowing 3.8 now 3.8 percentage we are borrowing from the market. Within this, if you see. Market borrowing is the government security, treasury bills, cash management bills. Under this, if you see, this blue color is rising, isn't it? What is this blue color? The securities against small savings, which are part of the public account of India. On the public account, we are drawing money. Right? So, government is resorting to this. Because it feels that the market is not so mature to give up or cough up all the money it needs. So, whatever money is there lying vacant with it in the savings deposits, small savings certificate, it is trying to use it up as an actual debt, not just taking it out. It is giving an asset and on, on lieu of it, it is taking. Right. Let that be. So, tax related measures, if you see what happened to income tax, hmm? yeah, the Vishwas scheme is a scheme which says that any defaulters are now given a special window to say that till March 31, if you pay, mullu money pongal, forgiveness fully, fully forgiven, no penalty, nothing. Adiki mail and our penalty. They mari pon or some once the Garib Kalyan Yosana. Vishwas scheme in the Mari Varsha Varsha and Para Perla rechristening of the same idea, but this will be introduced again. This also is saying complete waiver will be given. But the new tax structure, which is the tax slabs have been a little bit changed, isn't it? How this is the new tax structure previously exempt 5 20 30. This was the previous rate, isn't it? Up to 5 lakh, you have to pay 5 percentage. After that, rather in the 5 under the, uh, yeah, 10 in the last year, la, 5 pannu, 5 with rebate in Solino, early in Sol technicalities. Let us not talk more about it. Then above 5 lakh, it will be 20 percentage, above 30 lakh, it will be 30 percentage. This was a slab bracket. Now it has been changed. Now, 5 up to 7.5, 10. again 15. 12.5 working 20, 12.5 and 15 working 25, this is 30. This is only it will simplify tax payments. In hmm? Then the look simplification, I don't know. Right. This is not true. If we had moved on to this new structure, that could be simplified. In Nana, the old one has not been replaced. Angadha is twist. Now, payers have been given the option, you can choose any of this, any of this na, eppidi na, if you are choosing this, see obviously, no conditions na, everybody is going to choose this, another condition is, na, the tax deduction is irukun, ATC section in the mari, you have to forego those sections, if you are going to take new structure, so everybody now has to calculate his tax liability in two ways, one old new in the new la without tax old with tax deductions calculate money auditor ko rulla or lacham kudutu hmm adukaprom he can save to 2000 to 3000 rupees <laughs> right right so may, many were expecting a very radical move on this side but the government refrained from doing this especially because Investments were falling, demand was not picking up. So, that was a mood, prevalent mood among people that, among the economists saying that the government will take certain move in order to maximize or push more money into the people's pocket. 
sadly that didn't happen this year right we are even talking about the government was saying that it has bottomed out today growth phase lowering na bottom aichu inimel revival na sonanga nethi therinjiruchu every revival right so there are other things to talk but let us not talk because the survey no one irukke send it this will end our discussion on just to some things up punjichilla indha mari varaiyanu padam seriya means la So before going into the volume two, a brief introduction about volume one. Volume one, not a theme. Add to pathing na wealth creation. You would have come across it. how to create wealth in India. Actually, it's elaborate. It's speaking about Nariya profusely. It mentions about Arthya Shastra, Tiruvallur, or anna. Yes, yeah. And to me, all palaya munnoorgal muppatan. All that he had touched, right? And it says that. the orientation or the economic inclination of the government is pretty much manifested in the document last year but is very critical of the socialist practices that we have been following till now and it offers a new path into capitalism as if we are not right hello or theri there clear ah there is a pathway because we have to accept alle epdiyo i thought that it would be reading first volume romba really bore adikum nanse but somewhat interesting ah da irundhu right the discussion would have been pretty interesting but sadly time constraint nala we cannot talk on that so the detailed and very person no we will reserve that for after films to plan panirukom hmm aar varaporadhu illa solren hmm right is truly speaking if you also have would have personally read adha da prelims kaga endha maala un persa illa take away is not that for the sake of reading the readability kaga avana nalla padikalam alla nariya chapters irukku blueprint it says how to create wealth in what ways the government through its actions and policies have undermined markets in what ways it is not allowing the market forces to be in full flow indha maala nariya It says out certainly. Now, economic survey tool is just a plain summary or a statement of what has happened in India last year. Right? This is what we are going to see now with a two-minute break. Other questions? I will be relaxed when we get it. But tea, good. You have to eat. I am. I will go for a break.
Right. <clears throat> hmm, Bob. The first chapter focuses on the state of the economy, not only here in India, but across the world. Right. And after that, it lays down the chapters of what happened to monetary management, crisis, inflation, agricultural management. Likewise, detailed chapters are there. In no specific order or according to the chapter, we are going to discuss things. So, as to break the monotony or Mari Lama. So, Namula. Half a sada we are going to discuss. Right. First, the state of the economy, if you see, not only here in India, no need to say about our state of economy, isn't it? We all know very well, we are part of it. But what happened in the world? Are we an outlier here? When the world is growing, are we the only country that is falling back? No. But to say that, that alone is a reason. Because when we are growing, we will not say the world is also growing. Namma grow on up 8 percentage. China inna China. At that time, the whole world was growing at 4.5 percentage. Now we are growing at 4.5. three See the whole world is growing. Right. Whatever it might be, this of course a fact that. There is a state of gloom that is prevalent across the economic markets. This year, like other revival, but thanks to coronavirus, right? The financial market, everything is badly performing. China is on the verge of a collapse because manufacturing all contract within two months. Right? India leaves in six months. In one week, isn't it? USA markets. One or case than sunnanga USA la. Adi ka aungal or capital market e boyi chikila. 2008 recession mari arda. Adi ka. That is the implications of having an interconnected world. Out of no fault of you, you will be facing the brunt. Your economic fundamentals might be strong, but due to some scare. Everything will be occurring. Right. That is how we have devised the economy. That is how the world economic order is. Right. 
So you cannot complain about that. Now, especially if you see the slowest growth has been registered since the recession this year around the world, manufacturing activity and global trade has been the lowest in certain decades. Right? One of the reasons for it could be the US China world trade, Alula uncertainties, retaliations, because they are the giants of this world. Any problem there is going to have ramifications across the world, and we also were impacted. And this slowdown is consistent not only across the globe, even across regions, also it is slowing down. If you take Africa, if you take India, Asia as a region is one of the fastest growing continents in the world. Asia is also facing a slowdown. So, we are not an outlier here. We are just following the path of everyone. That's what we are friend to do. We are not going to be able to do that. We are not going to be able to do that. So, this pattern, this is what this pattern is. So, this clearly shows that India's growth is aligned with world growth. This was specifically discussed in 2017's economic survey, which said that we are no longer on our own. Our economic growth is dictated by the world trade. And that is what we are also now able to see. But I am a for a Gita Gopinathana Sonana. World Day Korea the Nida Karnon Tang Namala Nama Angla Karnan Sulla, Yangla Karnan Sulla. Right. So, whenever growth is slowing down, obviously inflation will also remain muted. This is what was seen. Take the case of these two charts, we can find the world is now growing on 2.9 percentage. Is a growth. Last year it was 3.6, it was 2.9. The advanced economies 1.7 now. Advanced economies of 1.7. Emerging and developing Asia. If you see, Asia is clocking the highest growth, isn't it? Especially emerging Asia, Korea, Namala. 6.7 was the growth, especially due to India and China. That is now stumbled this year. There is only 5.6. And India, which was a consistent overtaker of China in the last four years, last year, it has slumped down and it has lost its tag as fastest growing economy to China again. This year, we will beat. coronavirus hmm? That's all. Right. You see, this is a comparison of the BRICS nations. BRICS also consistent performer has been India and China. Brazil now on the due to certain instabilities, they have been even going towards a negative growth phase in the last four years. Somewhat a revival now. Even consumer price index also, if you see, this is India. Last year has been a slowdown. But India Marinella, India Lena Irgana. One strange phenomenon has happened. What has happened? When growth is falling, when growth is falling, in tandem, inflation will also fall. But India has been somewhat an outlier in this case. What has happened? Inflation has increased. So this is what we saw, isn't it? We are last, specifically in the year, in the month of November, December, and January, November, okay, December, January, maybe February also it might be continuing. The CPA is clocking 7.5 percentage, very high than threshold, upper threshold of 6. This is what is giving us all kind of confusion. This is what we are going to analyze. The survey also points out certain important facets of it. Three, growth of fixed investments. Fixed investments, not only in India, across the world. If you see, G7 countries, OECD countries, every country, irrespective of whether they are advanced, they are emerging, or they are on the lower countries, 
they have been following this pattern. Growth is falling. Inflation is also falling. The fixed growth investment, fixed investment growth. What is fixed investment? <coughs> gross fixed capital formation. No. Gross fixed capital formation, fixed investments or investments are all part of GDP. Expenditure side, la, GDP can do investment. Adhan. So when this is falling, GDP has to fall naturally. So this of this is one of the attributes, or we can say that this is the reason or the cause for the fall. So there are many areas that are falling. Either or reason. This is one of the important reasons. Now let's carry forth our discussion to Indian context. The Indian context, la, what happened to growth? The data which was available in the economic survey was a little bit outdated in the sense it had data only up till November end, December end. Yesterday, I was saying I was preparing this slide thinking that it would be on Friday, but luckily, it, since it was on Saturday, the very latest figures also came. Yesterday, what happened? GDP for the third quarter was out, and so we now have a nearly three quarters of data we are having. So whatever it try to analyze, we are going to analyze through the latest figures. So this is what we are now as of 2019 end. We are 2.9 lakh crores or 2.9 trillion lakh crores, 2.9 trillion economy we are and still another targeting 5 trillion. Within four years, we are going to nearly double, uh, double uh, some percentage, but it's a very far cry for us, isn't it? Hmm? It's a very, it's not a low hanging fruit for us, but still it says we are aspiring for being a 5 trillion economy and so this will be possible through a rebound in growth, economic service will be. So because of this, because of the latest figures, in September or August, around that time, you could have come across the news saying that we have now been pushed to seventh position. UK and France have overtaken us in the Mala because we didn't have the latest figures. Now again, we are on the top. We are on 2.9. But 4, 3, we are Right. See, compare it with the USA, how many trillion dollars they are having. Mm -hmm. Their economy, the size of their economy. See, Kandi by India, Allah Sahaja, I've been doing that. China, 14. Incomparable economies, incomparably huge they are. Right. That's new. USA, lump, another. If you bring in the effect of population, so whatever it is, 70 years back, it's a huge achievement in itself. So as of now, in nominal terms, not in PPP terms, in PPP terms, we are always third, third largest economy. In nominal growth terms, we are fifth largest economy, according to the survey. World Economic Outlooks. So, right. so, this is the new data that we obtained yesterday evening. Survey also speaks that both on the supply side GDP and the demand side GDP we have been following. Does it ring a bell? What is the supply side GDP and demand side GDP? Hmm? Yeah, you're right. The consumer side under the GDP terms la, to be very specific. What is that? We calculate GDP through three methods in Lambakanola. Primarily two methods. One is the product side method, and the other is 
எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் சைட் ப்ராடக்ட் சைடை தான் சப்ளை சைடுன்னு சொல்கிறோம் டிமாண்ட் சைட் இஸ் தி எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் சைட் ஸோ ஹேர் இஃப் யூ சி திஸ் இஸ் தி எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் சைட் ஸோ எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் சைட்னா புக்ஸ் வில் பி சை கன்சம்ஷன் ப்ளஸ் கன்சம்ஷன் ப்ளஸ் கன்சம்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் தட் இஸ் த ப்ரைவேட் பீப்புள்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் கவர்மெண்ட்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் அன் ஏஜென்ட் ஹியர் த்ரீ வில் பி ஃபேர்ம்ஸ் ஃபேர்ம்ஸோட எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் தான் இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட்னு சொல்லுவோம் ஃபோர்த் வில் பி த ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் த ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் வில் பி ஏர்னிங் த்ரூ இம்போர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் எக்ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் ரைட் ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் த ஃபோர் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஏஜென்ட்ஸ் அதான் டெக்னிக்கலாக என்ன சொல்கிறோம் ப்ரைவேட் ஃபைனல் கன்சம்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் தட் இஸ் ஃபார் ப்ரைவேட் கவர்மெண்ட்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் இன்ஸ்டெட் ஆஃப் இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட்ஸ் வி யூஸ் த ப்ராக்சி கால்ட் ஆஸ் கிராஸ் ஃபிக்ஸ்ட் கேபிட்டல் ஃபார்மேஷன் தென் ஆஸ் யூஷுவல் எக்ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் இம்போர்ட்ஸ் எக்ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் வில் ஆட் இன் டு அவர் இன்கம் இம்போர்ட்ஸ் வில் லீக் லீக் அவர் இன்கம் திஸ் இஸ் த கேஸ் நவ் ஹியர் ஸோ ஐ ஈவன் ஆஸ்ட் அபவுட் அ கொஸ்டின் இஸ் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் தி ஜிடிபி பர்சன்டேஜ் அசண்ட் ஸோ வென் எஸ்டர்டே யூ குட் அவ் ஹேர்ட் அபவுட் திஸ் இஸ் அண்ட் இஃப் யூ ஹேட் ஃபாலோட் த நியூஸ் ஃபோர் பாயிண்ட் செவன் பர்சன்டேஜ் இஸ் தி த ஜிடிபி க்ரோத் ஃபார் த குவார்டர் த்ரீ Now the question is, how did the quarter 1 and quarter 2 become 5.6 and 5.1? 5 and 4.5 are the same. Yesterday it revised. Yesterday was the revised table which said, at that time we were just doing certain errors were there. So after revision it says, the quarter 1 is 5.6, quarter 2 is 5.1. So both have somewhat shown a little bit of increase and if we compare that this year this quarter everybody was seeing that everybody was feeling that this year it is going to be this quarter is going to be a revival nalla revivites right maybe again there is going to be a revision in 6 months and they will be saying that quarter 3 is 5 but whatever it is we can never achieve 7.56 and on top of that see when it was 5 and 4.5 quarter 1 was 5 its own estimate government's own estimate 5 4.5 at that time it estimated that the growth is going to be 5.5 this year after this estimate it says the growth for this year is only going to be 5 so rbi also has attested to it it has said that it is forecasting a maximum of 5% gdp growth the mosp ministry of statistics have also said that this year it is projecting only 5% growth in india right it's very very low compared to our potential now certain other sections here so this is the contribution or the percentages how much the total together is the gdp that's why gdp today is calculated on the basis of expenditure side only and if you say 4.7 it is not be on the basis of product side it is on the basis of expenditure side so this is what we use for headline gdp calculation with that be here private final consumption expenditure 55 percentage which means that alone contributed to 55 percentage gdp which what i asked in one of the questions isn't it which of the following contributes to the highest amount in gdp in silly really good it those who are written test you will know consumption is highest this is one of the structure not only this year every year since our independence consumption led growth private only people people only consume so this has increased so much to 59 percentage this year this quarter so consumption has increased previously we would be saying the consumption has slowed down this is just the percentage rate but if you see actually how much it has abhi pata in absolute terms it might be a little bit higher but that also has slowed down right so when this has increased what is going to be hit hmm? gross fixed capital forms right new india strategy at 75 la niti aayog is saying that in order to realize our dreams of 5 trillion economy 
we need to ensure that the gross fixed capital formation is going to be 36 percentage of GDP, right? But from 33, around the prior to 2018, we were 33. From 33, we have now reached a historical high of 29, right? This is one of the concerns which we have to address. Even this year also, some sort of revival, but if you see in absolute terms, grow See exports and imports now, let us see. What has happened to exports? Exports there or small marginal change. Imports in Ayurveda. The share of imports is decreasing. Is it good for us? Because it might add to GDP. Because it is not going to leak out, isn't it? But whatever it points out or indicates the fact that India is not consuming. India is not having purchasing power to import. But this will reflect in the domestic sense also. On the whole, it might just assume, we can assume that this has lowered. But no. Just a drop in import does not necessarily mean that we are as a country growing. Where? Yeah, of course, not only, see, th this could be not only due to our fall in demand. All over the world, there is a trend. And here, if you see, compared to all other things, our import had drastically fallen. And this is not something that we can be proud of or that we can be very happy about. So, many of the people are saying, pure imports are falling. Right? There could be a favorable balance of payment, all that let it be. But it's she, it says that something is not right with you. We will see. balance of payments. Now we will see the product side, GDP. Yeah. I think it is not properly aligned. Whatever. The basic prices. GV at basic prices has. Product side, le, we won't find GDP. We'll be finding only GV at basic price. This is one of the important things. But we can arrive at GDP also, isn't it? GV at basic price. How to arrive at GDP? You have only GV at basic price. How to arrive at GB, GDP? GDP means GVA at market price. Apenna basic price. Market price matana. What will you add? Product taxes and subsidies you have to include, right? You see, this also has shown 4.5 percentage increase only. And here, if you see, agriculture has somewhat revived compared to past two quarters. Manufacturing has gone down. Something that we should be very concerned about is this. Consistently, even during a slowdown of growth phase, electricity has always registered a positive growth. Hmm? In several years, if electricity sector has contracted, that's just this quarter. That's why people are saying people are not even having the capacity to consume electricity. It, it can attest to the fact that many of the companies are shutting shops. Many of the small scale industries are not producing enough. Electricity demand, what could be the reason? Because people are not consuming electricity. This could be due to overall shortage. Automobile slowdown, you have to shut it down, isn't it? One plant is shut one more. And because of that, Electricity consumption will go down. That is what is happening. Right? So, this is what is the previous year, if you see, 5 percentage is the estimated growth. This is on the expenditure side and this is on the product side. So, we will be basically calculating GV at the basic price 
But if we add what? Product on taxes, we can find the GDP. This should be exactly equal to the GDP that we are arriving at the expenditure side. Or we can say it should be made equal, right? And that is why we have a very important thing called as discrepancy here. So, this is the revised estimates of last uh, yesterday's figures, right? So, this is clear that gross fixed capital formation is falling and all of that. Last year in the survey, the survey speaks of a virtuous cycle of growth, which says that investments, investment should be a leader here. When investment is growing, there will be economic growth. When economic growth is there, there will be consumption and consumption will now again feed back into the consumption or uh, the investment cycle. What has happened? Investments has fallen and due to this, so it is straight away charging. If we are going to take this at face value, the economic survey is charging that the slowdown is merely a cause or a reason because of the investment slowdown. Right? So, this investment slowdown is what we saw in the form of gross fixed capital formation, isn't it? So, gross fixed capital formation, how is it falling? If you take institutional sector, if you say household, public, everybody, everybody is falling since especially take the household sector, what has happened? Household sector, which was spending nearly 15 percentage to the gross fixed capital formation has been falling and falling and this reflects in the real estate stagnation in India. Across India, real estate sector is not as booming as it was expected to. This is because it has drastically reduced, at least on the public sector, public sector, the government is doing, it has to do, is not it? That is why it is sticking to some somewhat a linear line. The other areas. See, we have only data up till 18, 19 data we will be getting only after that. But based on the three quarters, it is very clear that from this point, everything is downward. So, why? Why is corporate, where is the corporate here? Private companies. Private companies is not kick starting, is not it? Private companies investment is not booming here somewhat following a flat line. Why is it? And very clear, the survey says that it might be due to the credit boom. Then a credit boom. So, whenever there is a credit, credit boom means so much of credit expansion, so much of loans being given. This will happen immediately after recession, the recession period. So, India was going through a recessionary period in 2008. There was a sort of revival in 2011, from 2011 to 2014 or from the period from 2008 to 11, 12, there was a credit boom in India and this credit boom, in order to incentivize credit, RB also will be taking very a soft pedaled approach, is not it? Due to this, many of the companies had taken a lot of loans and they after becoming unproductive, the effect is seen now is what the, but the survey claims. So, the investments slow down on the car now. Narendra Modi government kare yaare. Right. And so, in very profusely all throughout the uh, document, it compares the period between 2009 to 14 and after 14. See, the economic survey is about 2019-20, is not it? But it glosses over. I don't know why. Economic surveys are usually it has to be laying out the bitter fact, but it sometimes glosses over. That's what I felt very really while reading through. Right. So either or karnama irukla, and there was a study also in the World Economic uh, in the World Bank's study which said that in most of the countries, you see IMF study la, eighty countries survey studied. 
and wherever they studied they found that when there is a credit boom and this boom is taken by the household sector what would happen is they would be taking the amount that they have and they'd be spending the debt in the short run short run they'll be exhausting it unproductively they'll be spending it and after certain period of time when they have to repay the debt there will be no productive asset there will be no employment at that time they will cut down their expenditure so today if i am not spending if there is no investment no consumption you have to blame the loan that i have taken 5 years back so this is what the survey calls as the lagged effect of investments on growth investments are falling because of the credit boom that is seen some years back right see from march 8 to 13 and after this period infrastructure sector msme sector industry sector mbfc sector whatever be the sector one thing is clear that the credit growth was so high during those periods so prior to narendra modi government after narendra modi government namle pichikala sollala namla potinga so it says that whatever is happening in narendra modi government neru dhan kaaranam even household household fixed investments are also falling especially seen in the dwellings dwellings is this red part in 12.8 percentage that they were spending it has now fallen to 6.9 it is further reduced in 2018-19 and see when when this is falling what would happen but uh see when investments are not taking place what should happen investments are not taking place savings should fall the savings rate of the company com- country will fall and after that not only savings country another thing will fall, will rise what is that consumption will rise that's what is happening when this is happening it is traded off in the form of fixed investments are falling for households but their consumption is steeply rising which means they are just using their money not to save not to put in important aspects or capital assets they are just using it to consume so consumption panite irundha is not going to be sustainable for a longer time right so this is what we have to come back to this so investment slow down after some years the effect of any fall in investments will reflect in economic growth but when economic growth is falling within a short period of time it will reflect in this coming down of consumption it seems ana adu nadakkalaya and varsham this year has it happened no maybe going according to the arguments of the economic survey maybe next year what would happen consumption would come down because there is no money with the people isn't it let's see wait and see right oh prices and inflation if you are going to see we have discussed that inflation has been declining ellam paathom world over also there has been inflation which was sometimes uncontrollable bearing a few countries most of the countries have brought inflation under control in 1993 the world average inflation had peaked at 118 percentage it seems the highest inflation recorded in 1993 was 118 and now it has declined to 4.8 percentage say the world economic outlook why is this how has the world all together have been able to limit the effect of inflation It says that it is because many countries have adopted resilient f- fiscal policy and monetary policy they have induced certain reforms in the labor markets 
the world trade scenario has changed productivity has enhanced right and specifically saying adoption of a inflation targeting regime right after 1993 most of the countries have been going towards a inflationary targeting regime have we gone is india on the inflationary targeting regime are we targeting inflation yes since 2015 since 2016 we have been targeting due to the mpfa 2015 monetary policy framework agreement only we made a discussion isn't it that it should be brought within the limits of 2 and 6 right so it is not going to overshoot beyond a limit so in long term if we are going to analyze inflation has indeed been brought under control we had a similar sort of a question in this year's mains which asked I don't know precisely the question which said how do you feel that inflation has been tackled or been brought under control after the inflationary target period? with the long term effects of you have to speak you cannot just make answers out of thin air right so India also after this 2015 especially 2014 onwards inflation has been moderating at least till 2018 and 2019 from 2019 onwards what happened not to at least till November 2019 November and the Venga in Britain October 2019 we are not facing any kind of problems as far as inflation is concerned only after that we felt an inflationary situation right so it has been sticky so this has been the figures just for your understanding the various indexes that we are using there are many indexes but what is being used for calculating inflation cpa combined right so wpa cpa combined after that we have other industrial workers agricultural laborers and rural laborers so these are indexes that have their specific purposes Right, industrial workers will be used for calculating the DA of workers in the market. Now, a little bit of digging into the CPI core headline and food, uh, food inflation. Headline inflation means taken all things together. Core inflation means you just take away the effect of fluctuating commodities, volatile commodities and just have the remaining so here the black one is the headline are you able to see green is food inflation and the red is core right so this core and green these taken together is a headline right so headline inflation has shown 10 percentage in 2013 one of the primary reasons for it could be the inflation caused by food, isn't it? Likewise, if you see from this point, from 2016, headline inflation has also been dropping, but core inflation has not been dropping, isn't it? Core inflation remains the same, but headline inflation has dropped mainly due to the food inflation coming down. Right? So, when there is food inflation coming down, we cannot just be happy because food inflation or the food prices when they are coming down, it is going to ultimately derail our path of doubling farmers income, isn't it? Yeah? If they are not even able to get the remunerative price, then it is very sad. Again, it has increased, increase Archana is increase also. So, throughout we can see that as far as India is concerned, mainly due to the makeup of the CPA. The CPA in the area baskets are Unless some significant weightage is given to food products. And that is why whenever food products or food inflation is existing, there will be headline inflation also taking place. But the role of the RBA is to see what? Hmm? For two plus two to six and the other pakano hmm? core pakan ma headline pakan ma other pakano not core 
it should just be seeing the headline cpa combined the headline adukulla poi enna nu paakrom so when we are digging deeper only then we have these trends so this year this time suddenly 7 percentage ku mela podu nu sonna 7 percentage ku mela poradhukku kaaranam yaaru so 7 ku mela podu so we could not adopt a very strict view and say inflation is going above 7 so i am going to do monetary policy 7 ku mela poichu so monetary policy moolama i have to bring it down we should not hastily conduct monetary policy because the cause of this higher inflation is food which may moderate in the coming months so there is a kind of confusion that the rbi itself saying what should this target be qualitative or just quantitative even though it just seems to be quantitative on on face all monetary policies have been conducted by taking all factors into consideration this year it has been from 19 what has happened food inflation huh enga podu nu therilla pudikka mudiyala avara right so it increasing steeply along with that this is also increasing this is the if you can a faint blue bar you can see this is the target um, mpc target 6 and 2 it is way above 6 from in december it was 7 and 7.5 again this year this month it has been 7.69 or 7.59 so what are we going to do 14 percentage in food prices increase even wpa also sees the somewhat similar line but there will be a time where we are going to revise the entire wpa and cpa because 2011 basis le vachu kandu pidikirathu it is somewhat outdated right people have been saying the government may it will revise the base year of 2011 ellathai maathradhukku vaippu irukku maybe in the next in this year also or in the next year see in most of the cases here in 2015 rural inflation was higher com- compared to urban inflation then it somewhat converge with each other whether go up or high kurve send pola apdi solli konja dhooram travel pannanga adukapra enna sandeyo therla 18 la enna pandanga nee thaniya po naan thaniya poren solittu now cpa inflation is now in the urban it is higher in the rural it was lower till this now it is again catching up why is this trend why is this divergence kya abin solli paatha not only here why is urban inflation higher than low than uh, r- rural inflation paatha that also is saying that we have to look into the dynamics of the food inflation so what is the dynamics one <clears throat> clearly we are able to see that since 2019 this has gone up isn't it why is it falling why this divergence if you ask not only here across every commodity if you take even specific commodities you can find that urban inflation is higher than rural inflation even within food this is not this is for food inflation we are not taking other aspects food inflation so what does it mean the prices of food in an urban area is higher than the prices of but the question is if this is lower see one we are just focusing on the supply side or saying that due to such structural constraint cost push inflation but inflation fundamentally will increase or decrease based on the purchasing power when people demand more when rural demand is more what will happen it can lead to inflation so if inflation is lower despite food prices being high it says that proper prices have not reached the farmers and also taken as a whole the real wages of farmers have come down and that is why on paper kathirikaoda vela kooda irukalam tomato could be higher 
for the translation of higher prices into farm wages is very low. That is what it says as a problem, right? Fall of real wages. And this fall of real wages, the effect of real wages can be seen that even clothing, footwear, in the Maria item, even that rate is falling, which means that people are not even coming forward to buy clothes, footwear, in the Mari necessary items could have anger the Kiridia Lenor. But in this, there is one aspect that is going to be an outlier or going to be very exceptional here. Education, health care, in the Mari expenses, that is higher for rural which means despite having lower wages, they are compelled to pay for education and health care. Or we can say with whatever money they are earning, they are not able to buy clothing, they are not able to buy other things, they are just buying health care and education which seems to be a priority for them. So when, these, when this rate is rising, it becomes, it shows that education and health care is becoming unaffordable to the masses right this is the trend that it says that we can also infer see the real growth here the real wages for agricultural workers this year we have seen a revival of sorts a revival of inflation isn't it food prices are increasing and farmer Right? So, this is something structural, something we have to address based on the government's policy, fiscal policies. Ah, yeah, of course, after this, a little bit of rise. But see, it is not converging with the overall trend, isn't it? The rural inflation is something different. That's what the budget, the survey says. The component wise, even if you see urban and rural, miscellaneous item means here in the education, health care, in the Mari items, services related. Blue is urban. This is high for them. Fuel and light have come down, not just due to demanding power, demand power, purchasing power. Oil prices Motamave last year just been somewhat lower compared to the previous year. Housing la rural ke level la, yeah? Because we do not have representation of housing in the CPA itself, isn't it? It is not just zero because inflation we have not given weightage to it. Housing la ke. clothing and footwear see, inflation is very low which means prices are not picking up, there is no demand for it. But some other unnecessary items, Pantovaco in taxi can see what the rural area demand in the time. Right. So drivers of inflation, what has driven? So in our discussion itself, it's very clear, isn't it? This year inflation, if we have to point one culprit, it is due to Right? That trend is more visible when we compare the previous years and all. In 2018 and 19, uh, 17 and 18, if you see, in 18, the miscellaneous items, that is education, services related items now, has contributed so much to the inflation. If there has been 5 percentage inflation, much of the inflation has been contributed by this. Fuel, younger fuel, uh, fuel or significant proportion under food and beverages have fallen isn't it in 2018 if you could have seen even in the trend that we saw it was on the downward slide food prices along if you compare the previous year with this year it is very clear that a very huge portion is due to food and beverages fuel and light have been very minor this year and even miscellaneous items has also come down compared to the previous year. So, this very clearly attests to the fact that fuel inflation, uh, food inflation is one of the significant drivers of inflation this year. 
Now, if this is the case, okay, we'll, we'll see the first price controls that the government has undertaken this year. And after that, we'll move on. Onion prices was hitting 328 percentage inflation rate in December. Right, Adela? Tomatoes are good, pulses are good, whatever be the agriculture commodities, all have seen an upward pressure in inflation. Now, what are the reasons? See, these kind of things we can never find fault with just the demanding power, demand nala, purchasing power nala idala increase hama. Mostly agriculture products on the volatile products increase are the karno due to some supply chain supply side bottlenecks. So this bottleneck has been seen in onion mainly due to unseasonable rain. Unseasonal rain nalio. If you see the pattern of onion, so there are three seasons. Rabai season li, there will be onion in some areas. Karif li, there will be onions. And in the inter period, Zaidli or I think right, there also there will be onion. But in the November to and the time there will be no production possible across India. So at that time, in order to meet the supply at that time, we need to have a stock of the surplus that has been produced in the previous year. That stock will now have to meet the demand. The stock has or the surplus has gone down this year, mainly because rain, rain lala, 58 percentage drop in Madhya Pradesh, 18 percentage drop in Karnataka and heavy rains have even spoiled the timely production of onions in Maharashtra. And also the total zone area has also fallen down. So onion prices increase under the Mukhyamana Karno due to supply side constraints. Even uh, tomatoes also, pulses also, right? We'll see after that, one by one we'll see. We increase under the, at the time of this increase, it has been falling. Yeah, see, the tomato, uh, I think I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I, no, I had a slide of the production levels also. Right, I somewhat forgot to put it here. So if you see, if you see the production chart also, it will just be showing the inverse of this. At this time, the production of onions will be formed. So that's why this is increased even uh, from 2018. Tomatoes also somewhat seen a fluctuating trend. Pulses, if you see, strangely follows not a fluctuating trend, but sky and Oki Right. From in January 2018, it was below, it was going in a deflationary situation, it was in the negative territory. From that point, it has been increasing. Right. From here, it has been going into the positive territory and there has been no rest since then. One of the reasons, if you see pulses, so this fluctuation regular from December 18 to, this is, uh, this is 2018. From 2018, it has been increasing, increasing, increasing up until June 2019, see the, it is not the combined one, this is for taken all the pulses, gram, arhar, moong, dal, You see the combined pulses, it has been going like this. Why if you see, this increase is not to be panicked. If you just see this figure, you have to wait here, you have to wait the figure, what does it show? Because if you see this period, our But one trend is that here also, prior to hitting the peak, it was in the negative territory. But negative in the positive, positive in the marvelous negative. If you see other products, inflationary system Pulses in deflation 
சைன் வேவ் எப்படி கிரியேட் பண்ணணுமோ அதை நல்லா பண்ணுறாங்க இல்லையா ஸோ வாட் வாட் இஸ் த ப்ராப்ளம் ஹியர் ரைட் ஸோ இன் டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் இஃப் தேர் இஸ் பின் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ரைஸ் இட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ டியூ டு பரவாயில்ல வேற எதுவும் உடைக்கணுமா it has been due to fall in the acreage and a glut in the previous previous year la or glut irundhu marubadiyum adanalu prices kammiya irundhanalu this year what happened the acreage has come down or the production level has come this is called as the cobweb phenomenon cobweb phenomenon nu solranga here if you see 2014 15 slightly rise again it has slumped down after 2015 16 and this slump is now reading to increase in production level fall aachu na prices enna avum increase avum so this an inverse trend is quite visible here idu enna solranga na why is this called as cobweb phenomenon why is this happening why is production fluctuating between surplus and deficit they saying the prices in the market are taken as a signal by farmers in one particular year if they find that pulses are skyrocketing this year for example this year what will happen next season if they are willing to sow they will prefer pulses because the pulses have been going up because they sow pulses not only them everybody else will sow isn't it production level will increase when production level increases what will happen prices will come down tappu pointo ini mele endha paruppu na poda poradilla appdi solli he will say i am not going to grow anything immediately next year because not only this this is the phenomenon seen among farmers what will happen production fall aanal increase again they so they are creating their own trap their own cob and getting entangled within this right that is specifically true not only see this is true not only for this case for almost all the cases and that's why there is an interesting chapter in uh, survey volume 1 which says how the government has undermined market if at all the government was not intervening and if at all the market forces were determining determining the prices and if farmers were able to signal the prices by the market by what is happening in the market production will be smooth because you are entering you are disrupting this all cycles in solranga but that is something which can be argued against also right so enna pannalam preventing this cob phenomenon it says that illa na senja dhan solluvanga usa onnu solla poradhu illa free export of pulses should be taking place because whenever here the prices are not so low due to glut they should at least find markets elsewhere so export of pulses should be free should not be put under any stock limits and all right procurement of pulses should be strengthened stabilizing the prices should take place reducing the transportation cost for farmers adukaga enna na irukanum so all of this the government has been also taking steps especially in the form of price stabilization fund pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana right pm aasha scheme warehouses kaga transport scheme price is e naam moolama indha mari both forward and backward linkages the government has been giving to its farmers for a better price discovery so that they don't entangle into this cobweb phenomenon right so you can just note it down for your means now this volatile volatility means a fluctuating trend right this fluctuation is seen not only has incre- has increased in this particular year especially if you find tomato sugar pulses horticulture most of these have increased except wheat and pulses see so wheat and uh, so wheat pulses palm oil and rice in the mari items ku mattum avlo fluctuate agala idukku kaaranam enna appdi sonna government's intervention adhile contradict pandranga pathinga la 
right for government's intervention in anna wherever see the government is not going to procure tomato edum food stock edum vechirukanga like food corporation of india la edum vaangi ungalku edum aadhar card moolam edum kudukka poraangala no but food security act la enna kudukano they should be giving you wheat rices appra andha idella pulses ellame kudukano that is why the government is actively involving and being a big market player and that is why these are not finding any hiccups or fluctuation trend is not seen in these particular commodities even though they are facing the all the carbon phenomena ellame somewhat stable the karna avanga da so you should also idoda you can write this if at all there is a challenge for prices commodities na government should also bring other stabilization reforms norms for horticultural products right and not only that if you see uh, wholesale ku retail price ku there is a divergence divergence and that is seen not only in some cities across major cities there is a divergence wholesale price is smaller consumer price is always higher this could be due to transport in the process la nadakkum but this also says that a huge portion of the price is capitalized upon by the intermediaries it is the intermediaries who increase the price not the farmers not just the demand not just supply right the supply demand la enavaru mismatch irko that is being fully capitalized by the intermediaries and also finds that if traders come together as a union they form a cartel then they can of course raise the price of a commodity or then bring it down now to crack down on it the hoarding and the mari activities la korekano open competition should be there infrastructure ellame ulunga irukano please these were some price as far as drug pricing is concerned a very essential item in order to ensure a healthy citizen a healthy uh, india and for that there are certain ideas here national list of essential medicines is only there is a list that will be prepared by the ministry of health and that will be submitted to the N- np na the nppl uh, yeah npp endra or body national pharmaceutical pricing authority or body ta they will be handing over it and they will decide what the prices should be based on the order of dpc right this is the drug price control order alla enna solliranglo so these are the mechanisms that goes into <coughs> capping the prices of uh, pharmaceutical products you know legislative mechanisms right this nlem was nlem 2011 was uh, rekrishnand and it was okay, the list was changed in 2015 where 860 drugs were introduced which means some addition some omissions would be there this 860 drugs what has been to the price level is what is analyzed here says that nearly out of this 860 commodities most of the commodities have shown a price reduction after being brought here right so it in a way says that this is all necessary but the same survey contradicts in survey 1 saying because of this because of tight control of prices especially in the pharmaceutical sector if you compare the open sector that is not under the price control mechanism they have fallen due to competition but these prices nobody is producing because they are under tight control of the government and the prices is rising chilly or contradictory on our statement kuda vekkiram but here if you see but nevertheless taken as a whole it says that due to these efforts drugs have been made affordable to the citizens right so dynamics of inflation as far as we have known the peak levels have brought down have been brought down 
In 2011-12, if you see, it can go up to as high as 10 percentage and come down to as low as 0.5 percentage. This kind of a variation was seen. That has been brought down. Today, we are not allowing it to go beyond 2, 6 in the very tight control layer of The threshold limit has never been reached. The extremes have been lowered. Now, it speaks of a secondary effect of food and fuel inflation. What is the secondary effect? See, headline inflation is a combination of these. We saw that food inflation is going to increase the headline inflation, but the core is going to remain the same, isn't it? How much does it impact the householder's thinking? For example, this year, this month, food inflation has been rising. How will I expect the inflation of the next month? And how am I anticipating? How am I planning accordingly? If I feel that this is too much, then I will take steps accordingly, isn't it? So, there is a strong correlation saying that whenever food inflation is rising, people expect that inflation is still going to rise and they take steps accordingly. So, when they anticipate, they will fuel inflation. Because when I feel that there is going to be inflation, I will be spending now itself. I am not going to save, isn't it? So This will give rise to more inflation. If that is the case, the RBA cannot be just um, secondary effect is too much. Or to say, the food inflation is going to fuel more inflation, then the RBA cannot be sitting so lightly on it, saying, okay, food inflation may moderate. Because this year, due this month due to food inflation, it has become 7.8. If the secondary effect is too much, there are chances that next month also food inflation, even though food inflation may come down, people's expectation is going to go up. And so, there has been secondary effects or impacts of inflation that has been curtailed as of now, is what the survey finds. There has been a convergence, somewhat the secondary effects have been curtailed. If at all it is there, it is going to cause a lot of challenges to our monetary policy formulations. Right. So, measures uh, that has been taken is minimum export policies, the, uh, the uh, you know, for onion, Coding Gahani part no. From Turkey, we will buy another onions. Ejiputu, Ejiputu onion long obviously. Right. And so, stock holding limits lamp or tongue. Yeah. It said that 20 quintals as a small retailer you should not have, wholesale retail, 250 quintals Kimala, he should not hold. Mala Solitananga, in order to benefit onions. MEIS scheme, Mercantilized Exports to Indian scheme on the, uh, on the scheme blur, whatever benefits was there, they removed it so as to not allow them to export. Because export panna marubi on inflation. So these were some of the things that have been taken and it also specifies minimum support prices will increase for a mission for integrated development for horticulture, national mission for uh, oil and oil palm production, Apro national food security mission. You know? Just note it down so that you can the mission but just objective and what does it try to not not right a lot of things to discuss you have to go at a rapid pace now